Chapter 34 And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her, and lay with her, and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel, and spake kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spake unto his father Hamor, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were come. And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it, and the men were grieved, and they were very wroth, because he had wrought folly in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. And Hamor communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter, I pray you give him her to wife, and make ye marriages with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you. And ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade ye therein, and get your possessions therein. And Shechem said unto her father, and unto her brethren, Let me find grace in your eyes, and what ye shall say unto me I will give. Ask me never so much dowry and gift, and I will give according as ye shall say unto me, but give me the damsel to wife. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor his father deceitfully, and said, Because he had defiled Dinah their sister, and they said unto them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that were a reproach unto us. But in this we will, will we consent unto you, if ye will be as we be, that every man of you be circumcised. Then we will give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters to us. And we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if ye will not hearken unto us to be circumcised, then will we make take our daughter Dinah, and we will be gone. And the, their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. And the young man deferred not to do the thing, because he had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all the house of his father. And Hamor and Shechem his son came unto the gate of their city, and communed with the men of their city, saying, these men are peaceable with us, therefore let us let them dwell in the land and trade therein. For the land, behold, it is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only herein will the men consent unto us for to dwell with us, to be of one people. If every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised, shall not their cattle and their substance and every beast of theirs be ours? Only let us consent unto them, and they will dwell with us. And unto Hamor, and unto Shechem, his son, hearkened all that went out of the gate of his city. And every male was circumcised, all that went out of the gate of his city. And it came to pass on the third day, when they were sore, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword, and came upon the city boldly, and slew all the males. And they slew Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their sheep and their oxen and their asses and that which was in the city and that which was in the field. And all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives took they captive and spoiled even all that was in the house. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, Ye have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I, being few in number, they shall gather to themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, Should he deal with our sister as with a harlot? This incident, the rape of Dinah, Jacob's only daughter, is an example of one of the problems that righteous people have always had with unrighteous people. And it's why they try to live the covenant and try to live uh, in as many with as many other people around them who live the covenant so that their children are protected from this kind of thing. What we saw here is the son of the local king. Hamor is the local king. Shechem is his son. He sees Dinah. He says, I want this woman. And he either sends people to get her or he goes and get her. There's no thought here that this shouldn't happen. The point is he does exactly what he chooses to do and he takes her and rapes her. There is no hint anywhere 
that she has even consented, that she's gone with him willingly, or that she's even been deceived. Just she's grabbed and raped. It says later on that he tries to speak peaceably to her. In other words, he basically would say the kind of thing, well, it's happened now, you know, I am the son of the king, it's not really all that bad, uh, we'll look after you as best we can, to try and get her reconciled to what happened. And she's really, I'm sure, does not want to have any of it. Um, now, the rage, the outrage that her brothers have is perfectly understandable. According to them, there's very little that could have happened. It would have been better that they killed her. would have been less problematic to have killed her. But to rape the daughter of somebody was just the worst of all possible things that could have happened to her. And what they did was they set it up so that they lied to them. They set up the whole community, Shechem's whole community, to be killed. And what they did was they said, well, okay, we'll, they, they lied to them. You know, we'll consider taking your daughters to, for wives. We'll let you take our daughters. But you can't have our daughters unless you're circumcised. And Shechem, he was ready to go for it. It says he was more honorable. I think, don't think honorable was the right word. He was more willing to do it, more committed to do it. If he had been honorable in the true sense of the word, he wouldn't have raped Dinah. Or if he was more honorable than anybody else, then everybody else would have done worse because what he did was not was absolutely intolerable, worthy of death in those days. Uh, in the amongst the people who were Jewish, you, you, you did what he did, you died. Just plain simple. That's exactly what happened. Uh, but, of course, because he was the son of a king, he could. there was nobody except his father. And his father loved him, so his father would try and get whatever he wanted. This was the problem Abraham had with the Pharaoh. This was the problem Isaac had with the uh, well, local king, Abimelech. Uh, you know, they, he was afraid. These people would see his wife. That's why each of them said, say you're my sister. And that protected his life. But it also saw to it that there was something to deal with there, and this particular case was just absolutely horrendous, would have broken Jacob's heart. And they had insult to injury. The sons lied, said if you guys will be circumcised, we'll think we'll circumcised, we'll we'll do the trade for wives for wives sort of thing. We can have ours, we'll have yours, we'll be happy, everything will be great. Shechem and, and uh, his father Hamor go up to the, the city and they say, look at guys, this is all they want. And of course if they do that then their cattle will be ours, and their trade will be ours. And, and it looks as though, perhaps, they're looking at really coming out winners here. Well, the second or third day, as these guys have been circumcised, and they're all really sore and pretty much debilitated, as would be anticipated, two of the brothers stole in and into the castle, uh, city and killed all the males. Obviously, it could have been too many millions of males. Two guys could kill everybody. So these are, this is what I tell you, these are small towns. These are villages, largely small towns, villages, maybe a couple hundred. I don't even think a couple of thousand people. That would be far too many for a place like this. A couple of hundred. And they rescue Dinah. It says, I think it's in verse 26. They, they get a hold of Dinah and they take her out. And now Jacob is upset with his sons. Because not only do they kill all the males, but they go in and they spoil all the houses. Which means they, they take all the clothes, all the wealth, all the treasure, anything they can find. They take the women, the children, the whole shot. And they, they rape the town, in essence, because one guy in the town raped their daughter. And he's now Jacob is upset because he says, we're small in number. And now, we could kind of stink around all these people. You know, it's sort of like a skunk at a picnic party. They're going to know we're here, and they're going to like it. And all that's going to happen is they're going to get together, and they're going to come and kill us because they're afraid that we're, we're because we killed all of their men, that we're going to try and find a way to kill, uh, kill all of Hamor's men. We're going to try and kill all of their men, too, and they're going to try to defend themselves against us by killing us all up front. And so that was the problem that Jacob faced. We see that this lusting after people 
whether lusting after money, lusting after women, lusting after anything, creates nothing but grief for all those people who are involved in it. And these are the problems that these people have. Instead, I mean, if the sons had gone to Jacob and said, what do we do about this? Jacob would have come up with something that they could have done. But with inspiration from the Lord, in most cases, I'm sure. But as long as people try to do things entirely on their own, they only make it worse and worse and worse. You want to stand tall? Get on your knees.